Today's guest is Denny Fuller. As a musician, performer, and producer, Denny has known every corner of his local music scene. Welcome, Denny. Hey, how's it hey, going, thanks. man? Hey, how's it going, Bowie? Going good. Thanks for joining us today. Yeah, of course. Nice to meet you all. Yeah, it's nice to meet you too. So let's start thanks. back at the beginning. Where were you born and raised, and how did music first come into your life? Um, I grew up in Chandler and Mesa, Arizona, which is kind of like Gilbert and Tempe. So if anyone knows the East Valley over there, um, the Valley of the Sun, so hot. I mean, you know, six months out of the year, it's like over 100 every day. Wow. And it doesn't rain very much and stuff like that. But um, grew up in the burbs. All the, every six house looks the same and whatnot. And um, I think I think for a while I was like kind of mad about that. Um, growing up in the burbs, I wanted to grow up somewhere cool, you know, in the city or something like that, or on the beaches of LA, like the Beach Boys or something, you know. But but now I've come to my come full circle and kind of been uh, been like, you know what, I you know I am exactly who I am right now because of everything that came before me. So I've been like kind of gripping with uh, that reality of of mistakes and fortune and not fortune in that you know in like a money kind of way but more like fortune of good things that have happened and whatnot um have all led me to where i am right now you know to me and you talking even and whatnot um got, got into music um my parents weren't really that musical um but we had six kids in our family and they make it made us all learn how to play piano and they pick an instrument you know and uh when when either uh orchestra or band would start in fourth or fifth grade so I picked trumpet thought it was cool probably thought it was really loud and you know like I, I don't know I I started playing that so I picked trumpet it was loud it was fun it's melodic I guess you know um and did that in the elementary school junior high friends started uh buying guitars and stuff or their parents did so we all learned how to play power chords and play along to like our favorite Blink-182 songs or something Nice. Um, you know, or in whatever Newfound Glory and Jimmy Eat World, whatever, whatever we were listening to at the time. Um, and and then I kept, I, you know, we kept get, doing it, learn how to play open chords, water, yada, yada. Flash, flash forward until the end of high school, I quit music and I was just like, I don't want to do music anymore. Like the way that, you know, the, they presented it to me in the wind ensemble at the time was just not desirable. So I was just like, um, I got into snowboarding and skateboarding and all that stuff. Flash forward another couple of years when I was 20, I moved up to Salt Lake in 2007 to snowboard. And, you know, um, I'll try and keep it interesting and short if I can. So I moved here to snowboard. I was like, I'm done playing trumpet and piano and all these other things and whatnot and wanted to become a professional snowboarder. So I snowboard like 70 days of winter working at the local shops and whatnot. And, um, get some like small sponsorships, you know, nothing paid or anything, but free gear and whatnot. <laughs> Kept getting, uh, I was trying to film video parts and get shots in local magazines, all that stuff. And then I kept getting hurt. I separated both my shoulders, broke my collarbone, wow. broke my jaw, had some concussions, like blew out my knees, stuff like that. And finally got the lesson after a few years. Flash forward to getting hurt so much. I was just like getting, my body was getting bombarded, you know? And I was like, I finally had the smarts to be like, you know what? Um, I think I want to get back into music. So I kind of started playing my trumpet a little bit again. And by this time, it was probably like 2009, maybe 2010. And um, I, I kind of am phasing out of snowboarding, but I'm kind of still doing it too. Uh, and starting to play my trumpet again. I meet this dude at church and um, I was like, hey, I heard you have a band or something like that. Um, I play trumpet. I've been meaning to want to, you know, get back into music. And he's like, well, I don't know if I can use a trumpet player, but why don't you come over anyways and we'll jam or something, you know? And, um, that was, his name was Bo Underwood and he, we were in a band called St. Bohem. Oh, nice. um, and so we ended up playing like um, Slug, a handful of years, Slug, not Slug, City Week, nah, what's it called? Craft Lake City. Uh, nice. We started playing Craft Lake City every year and we were the uh, house band at the Paris Bistro restaurant and we played tons of weddings and stuff like that. So I got back into music there around 2010 fall. Um, and he taught me how to play ukulele and banjo. And I was learning how to play the euphonium by myself. And I was playing glockenspiel and vibraphone. 
um, and trumpet again. And then I was playing the trumpet and the glockenspiel at the same time. So we were just like a little trio trying to make as much noise as we can uh, playing European folk music and, and soundtrack music and stuff. But anyways, long story short, I was in my early 20s when I kind of got back into music and then it got me into school. So I took it seriously, learned theory and uh, ear training and um, learned how to play jazz a little bit um, in little jazz combos and whatnot. Um, and then uh, kind of in 2011, 10, I joined a group called Gothin. We were like an indie rock group, kind of sound like Grizzly Bear and Fleet Foxes, that kind of vibe. And then just played in bands ever since. I mean, I've been in, I don't know, 15 bands since, you know, something like that. Maybe, maybe played with more than 20 or 30 since then as well, you know, just like featured artists or like come play live with them for a show or two and whatnot. But before you let me get too far, I think that's pretty close to where I am. I finished some schooling at Salt Lake Community College, studying composition and all that stuff. And, um, and yeah, and just joined bands and kept playing in bands and um, started composing more and do, getting commercial jobs. Anyway, I'm trying to I'm trying to keep it short so that it's no not too uninteresting no. or anything. But that's that's great. That's my my quick uh, from being a kid up until now. That's my my quick story, I guess. Yeah, that wasn't that quick. Maybe it was like that, five minutes. No, that's great. That's awesome. There's a lot to unpack there. Yeah, there's a, yeah, there's a lot. <laughs> How many instruments do you play right now? Uh, I mean, I play whatever I need to play to get it on the recording. But uh, to, just off the top of my head, uh, things that I can play well enough to record with and play live with would probably be, I can play drum kit, bass guitar, electric. Uh, I can't do upright. I can do electric guitar. Uh, obviously, acoustic comes with that. Ukulele, banjo. I can do mandolin as well. Euphonium, trumpet, um, French horn. Um, I could probably play a trombone. Not saying I can do it well, but I can get that sound out of there that I need to um I can I can do a violin not very well um clarinet glockenspiel vibraphone marimba xylophone melodica toy piano uh what else my accordion I can do a little bit of as well um tambourine shaker claves any of those box percussion instruments and um yeah I don't know anything under the sun you give it to me and I'll try and play it Maybe not that well, but yeah, that's I'll amazing. do a take. I'll do a <laughs> thanks. I'll do a take until it sounds good on the record. So. Yeah, for sure. So what pushed you to want to learn all these instruments? Was it because you had a sound you're shooting for that you needed to be able to play? Or is it that you just wanted to be expanding just creative? It's a good question. Um, I When I joined that group that I was talking about, and I, I joined them in 2010 called St. Boheme, we were pretty eclectic and um, it needed that kind of European folk sound um, and soundtrack sound. So I would play trumpet on one song, then the next song would be glockenspiel. So I had to learn how to play glockenspiel pretty well, get some good mallet control. And then the next song I'd need to play ukulele and we'd be playing like autumn leaves or some standard or something, you know? And then the next song I'd be playing trumpet and glockenspiel because we needed a, some chords on the glockenspiel or whatever, a melody and a trumpet. Um, so he, they, that band kind of kicked me off to like learning a bunch of other instruments. And then I just kind of kept going um, when I started recording myself. Um, so to kind of move back to your question, the motivation was originally started by necessity. And then when I started recording my own albums and whatnot, it was kind of like, uh, I didn't want to use the fake instruments that were included on Logic or Pro Tools or whatever. Um, or I could buy fake instruments and stuff like that. I was like, I just did not like the fake instrument sound. I think it's cool for like maybe new wave and some other pop music and stuff like that. But for the kind of sound I wanted, I just needed that kind of authentic, um, the, the authentic timbre that you hear in a room when a, when a real instrument is playing. Um, so yeah. I kind of, I kind of just wanted that sound. And, uh, and so, so just got a little bit better at those instruments. I wouldn't say I'm a pro at any of them. I think trumpet I'm pretty good at. Um, and bass I'm pretty good at as well and whatnot but like none of them I would say I'm pro level but I can if you hear my recordings I think I'm pretty convincing yeah that's amazing so you say you're um you've worked on production too what at what stage in your life did you start working on the production side of things dude that's a I mean it starts so small right when did you start getting into production um 
It's a good question. I feel like it, um, it always starts small, right? So I think I got, I was working for Skull Candy uh, in 2010 to 2012 and they gave me a MacBook um, to use at work and it had, it had a uh, garage band on it. Right. And I, I started playing in those bands and stuff. And I was like, Oh, I want to record my own thing. So I started covering songs and writing my own tunes and arranging them on garage band. But at the time I only had an acoustic guitar. So I was recording the acoustic guitar to the mic that was on the cord of my headphones oh, wow. while playing or while on garage band. So I'd be playing and the mic right here is like hanging above the guitar picking up the acoustic guitar i'd throw saturation on it so it sounded like a, an electric guitar you know distortion saturation kind of thing and then i'd use the fake drums in the in the garage band and then um i can't remember if i had a bass for a while but i ended up buying a bass a hofner bass the violin one in like 2011 and started recording on that one i bought a little interface from a friend too later on so i didn't have to use the mic but my first few productions were um like uh, we were like through a headphone mic, you know, wow. real crappy. Yeah. I mean, like listening back, they don't sound too bad, but I was just like, uh, that kind of got me into production and like thinking about multi-tracking, you know, and, and like how you can arrange a piece um, and use your computer or use the studio as kind of an, a tool or an instrument in production. And I didn't even really necessarily know I was producing myself or whatever, but I was like completing a full track doing everything on it and whatnot. Um, and I kept trying to want to make those recordings better and better and better. So every year or two, I feel like my, my mixes would be like, oh, that sounds better. That sounds better. I learned a new skill. That sounds better. Get some better gear. That sounds better kind of thing. And start to, um, in your brain, like work out why a track is sounding good or when you're listening to, you know, the Beatles or Arcade Fire or the Black Lips or the Black Keys or whatever you're listening to. You're like, why does this track sound good? You know, and started paying attention to that kind of thing more um, and failing a lot, to be honest, you know, like this yeah. track sucks. You know what I mean? Like, why does my track not sound good? I know it's not a bad song or whatever kind of thing. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, it just it just was exciting to kind of do that and um, get better and then start working with other artists and and see how see if I can make their track sound better kind of thing you know that's awesome what was your initial vision for why you wanted to produce was it for yourself was it for others honestly it was like it, uh, it was money so if I could make recordings sound good myself and produce songs myself then I wouldn't have to pay uh, like a local studio or engineer and producer and go to some studio that costs 75 bucks an hour yeah. you know kind of thing um and, and I think in the long run, I was like, oh, I can make somewhat of a living doing this as well if I get good at it, because a lot of people don't want to get good at it, right, kind of thing. They just want to write songs and record them or something kind of thing. So um, it, it was like, a, it was again, it was like a necessity breeds invention, but I'm not really inventing anything, you know, kind of thing. It just kind of like was, yeah, I need to, I need, I want to make these recordings sound good. And I want to go this route. So I learned how to do it and started buying plugins, you know, and buying better microphones, whatever, and, um, getting better tube amps and, and better gear to really make that sound get warmer and better and, and whatnot. So that's awesome. Yeah. Sorry, I feel like I'm ranting a lot. No, no, it's great. I'm, sure I'm staying focused here. Yeah. Yeah. And on the it's straight great. and narrow. <laughs> For sure. So what do you see yourself more as being right now? Do you see yourself as more of a producer, as a um, performer? What is it at the moment? Well, right now, I mean, I don't feel like much of a performer. Um, obviously with COVID and whatnot, I've only played like three shows the past year. Um, but, which is funny because the previous 10 years, I honestly probably played 350 shows wow. over 10 years, you know. Um, but right now I feel like a composer and a producer. Um, I recently have finished up a collection of music composing for Warner Brothers, or it's called Warner Chapels Music Library. Um, and that was, that really got me back to the composing, which is really cool. Uh, not that I had never left it or whatever, but I think a career of a musician like me um, ebbs and flows. Like one, you know, half the year you'll be working on a lot of productions and then maybe a composing job will come up and then you more produce. But anyways, I, I finished that production. It was doing 10, 10 songs or pieces for that library. And it was all 
instrumental music, um, no vocals really other than some oohs and ahs kind of thing. And so I feel like a composer right now, which is awesome because that's what I studied. And that's kind of my long-term goal is to kind of film score or film score, score films um, and do that kind of stuff and, and be a hired composer when someone wants to commission me for something and be able to do that and orchestrate things. But I'm producing a lot right now. So that feels, that feels like, I feel like a producer right now, which is, is cool. And that's, that has been a long-term goal to be able to um, be one of the, the guys to go to um, locally when someone's like, Oh, I, I want to make a good record or a good EP or a good single or whatever. Um, and I, and I don't know all the parts to make this thing sound like a competitive piece of recorded music, you know? So it's like, I hear these, these local, these touring national touring acts, how can I sound, sound like them? And I want, I, I essentially want to be a guy that can help people do that and be a good collaborator, a good listener, but someone that can contribute when it's needed as well. So right now I feel like a composer and a producer, not much of a performer, but we do have a couple of shows coming up next, next month. So I'm excited for that. Some outdoor that shows. Is, that's yeah. awesome. At the Urban so, Lounge. So. Awesome. Yeah. So for new artists who kind of want to take that road of getting their songs placed in media or on some song library or something like that. Yeah. What's that process like? Kind of walk us through that. Yeah. Uh, um, I wish there was a really simple answer, but I, I think I'll try and simplify it as much as possible is, 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 is doing it a lot. So if whatever you, you want to see yourself doing in the next few years just start doing that a lot and visual, visualizing that as well. Cause it'll take you a few years to realize that, right. Or it might take a lifetime. Um, but if you don't start now, you'll, you'll never, you'll never get to where you're going to go. Right. That thousand mile journey starts with your first step. So cheesy, but it's, it's seriously true. Yeah. Um, I'd say if you want to get into library music and whatnot, um, go listen to libraries music. Go, go listen to uh, Warner Chapel's library. It's available to listen to. Go listen to, um, there's some other websites as well, like Jingle Punks and uh, Song Trader and Marmoset um, Music Bed, stuff like that. Um, go see what kind of music those artists are making. And then you can kind of mimic that. I wouldn't say mimic it to a T because everyone needs to have their own voice. Yeah. But by mimicking people, you'll find your own voice as well. So I'd say, you know, mimic people to learn how to do it that really well. Um, and then your own voice will shine through and your own filter. Um, but do it a lot. Um, record lots of little tracks, two minute tracks. Do a little idea. Um, you're like, I want to make a folk song. Try and go listen to a folk song. Find those elements that are in the song and then replicate those things. Um, and, and if you didn't do it that well, try and figure out why, why it doesn't sound that good or whatever kind of thing. Um, but f listen to the rhythms in the song and, and listen to how many instruments are in it, what instruments are doing what things and whatnot. But I'm not going to get too specific, specific, eh, specific or whatever there. But yeah. for, for libraries, go listen to what libraries are doing. Um, listen to how long the songs are and whatnot. Then um, if you feel like you've got some good tracks, email the library and whatnot, and they'll either say, these sound good, or they'll say, hey, we have an application process, go through this, and whatnot. Um, but all, with all that being said, you obviously have to be good at doing the music and whatnot, but relationships, make relationships with everyone. Just build bridges all the time, always be throwing out lines, going out to lunch with people, um, meeting people like yourself and whatnot, um, and I'd say, like meet people, but don't network. I mean, make friends, make friends with people, lasting relationships. Get people relationship. will, yeah, exactly. People will, um, people want to work with people that are nice and that people they want to work with. It doesn't even necessarily matter if you're the best at what you do. It matters if you're really good and if you can collaborate with people um, and deliver as well. And whatnot. I'm not the best. I don't think I'm the best, um, but I know I'm pretty good. I'm confident in my skills, um, and and it's fun to it's fun to laugh with people. People want to be able to not be annoyed um, by people, and they, you know they want to get along and they want to they want to share a share a lunch or a drink with someone or whatever. Um, but so it's like with all that being said, once you're good at what you do 
and you have some skills, I'd say start making relationships now um, and, and whatnot. And you'll end up collaborating with those people later. And if someone says no to you, it's not no forever. It's just no for that instance. That's a good maybe way of summing up getting into trying to get into libraries and getting in music for syncing and into TV and film and stuff like that. It's not that they're, if they say no, it's not that they're dissing you or saying, um, no, your whole career is invalid or your skills are invalid. It's just like, we needed something really specific for this job or this library or this collection or whatever it is. It's just not what you're offering right now. Um, and your style is a little bit different or whatever. So I'd just say like, be resilient and, and know that the no isn't no forever. Yeah. It's just I love no that. right now. Yeah. I think that's great advice. And I think a lot of people are going to find a lot of uh, value to take from that. So that's awesome. What advice would you give to new artists who were at the stage where you were at a few years ago or several years ago, um, where you know some instruments and you want to get into production, but you don't quite know what the first steps to take would be. And like, what advice would you give to them? Um, so I think it, as far as the question goes, would you say you, you want me to, it's, um, give advice for someone who wants to record their own stuff or someone that just wants to move forward in their kind of like artistic career, maybe as a band or a group or an artist or yeah, 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 maybe. Let's say on the recording group. side, like on the production side, like they want to record their own stuff and be more self-sufficient like you want it to be. Cool. Yeah, that's good. That's a good question as well. Um, for someone that's kind of getting going, um, I'll try and keep it really simple. Um Get a, get a, you got to get your DAW, of course, you know, whether you're working in Pro Tools or Ableton or Logic or even GarageBand. GarageBand's just fine as well. Um, Which one would you recommend for a starter? I mean, I use Pro Tools. I know it's a lot more expensive, but um, I mean, if you can get, if you can spend a little bit more, go for Pro Tools. But if you're, if you have a smaller budget, go with Logic. If you have Apple and whatnot, it's great. You can get all the third party plugins and whatnot that sound awesome. Perfect. and whatnot and they all do the same things ableton you get a little bit more people that are using loops and electronic music and maybe hip-hop and um and edm stuff like that um you'll get them in uh, ableton but they're, they're all going to do the same thing i just say get good at one of those um and get get fluent in it right um but so once you kind of get in there and you, you learn how to press record and stuff like that get yourself a little interface uh, and if you want to record drums and whatnot, get a little bit bigger interface, of course. These are obvious things. I don't want to go over, you know, the semantics yeah. too much and that stuff. But one thing that I, I do wish people would have told me earlier in my recording career um, is get a preamp, get a really good preamp. Like you can get a really awesome sounding one for two or 300 bucks um, used on reverb.com or eBay or whatever. But because your, your interface has a preamp on it and those are going to sound really clean and they can drive your signal a little bit and whatnot. But if you want your recordings to start sounding really good, get a, get a good preamp, get a good dynamic microphone, which is like your SM57 or 58 or whatever, and then get a good condenser and then figure out when to use those two, two microphones and, and, and figure out where to place them, where your instrument sounds the best or your vocals sound the best and whatnot. Think about the room you're in as well. So it's like, I'm trying to, again, I'm trying to not complicate it too much. Get a good preamp, get two mics or however many you need to record your, you know, your band or your instruments and stuff. And then, and then figure out how to use those in a really good way. Everyone wants to get into all the plugins and start buying tons of plugins and stuff like that. But I think you can get a really good sound um, of whatever you're recording by picking the right mic and putting it in the right place. Um, with a good preamp. The preamp will make that signal sound so full and um, it can add a little bit of saturation to that sound, which also makes it warm and full as well. But use those ears. Your, your, your best tool is your ears. Um, so getting into music production is like, um, definitely think in multi-track mode and whatnot, but I'd say more importantly, uh, like once you get good at songwriting and stuff like that, which I assume most people are by the time they decide to, um, you know, buy some recording gear and stuff like that. And if you're not good at songwriting, who cares? Write 50 songs and guess what? You're going to be good at songwriting after that, yeah. <laughs> you know, but I'd say pick a DAW. It doesn't really matter which one you get. 
get a good preamp, get a good mic or two, figure out how to use those ones. Um, and then turn on your ears and go from there. Love it. That's great. And then one last question for you. Um, at what point would you recommend someone start to monetize their production? Like to actually say, this is my business and I'm ready to accept people to do it for. It's a really good, tough question. I think that's a big gray area, but um, I, I do think, I think what you should do before you start to monetize it is start to build your portfolio, if you want to call it that, a little bit. Um, I'd say the first productions that I was probably producing for other people was for little or no money, you know, kind of thing. Um, because here's my reasoning for doing things. I don't advocate doing things for free, really. Um, always do trade or lunch or something like that. You know, um, if someone, if you want to do something like produce someone's uh, single or something like that, and they don't have any money, maybe they have some extra gear lying around that they don't use anymore kind of thing. Be like, Hey, are you using that flanger pedal or that boss delay anymore? And they will be like, no, I don't use delay. I'm playing punk now or something. You know what I mean? Like um, be like, yeah, dude, toss me that. And I'll do a, a day, a day session with you kind of thing or whatever. But the, the main reason I'd say to do that is, is um, for pressure as well. So it's like, if someone's paying you, $250 to, to record for record them all day. There's some sort of agreement there that you're going to do something that's probably really good and top notch. You're not going to make mistakes um, or you'll make very little mistakes and stuff like that. So when you start getting to the people are paying you um, good money and whatnot, that's their hard earned cash kind of thing. Rarely are us musicians and artists, um, well off right i mean none of us have tons of money most of the time and stuff like that and even if you do have tons, tons of money you want your money's worth so i'd say start out doing stuff um find your friends or go to local shows and and find the opening bands and be like hey have you got anything recorded and, and they might say oh we just self-recorded and be like hey let me come in and record so you guys can just focus on playing and creating and i'm going to set up my mic and preamp and let's start making a song I'll either do it, um, you guys just buy me food tonight or give me some gear. Or if you feel like you're good enough, be like, hey, just what do you guys have? You ask people, what's your budget? And they'll say, I think we can afford 50 bucks or something like that to record with you this weekend. And you'll be like, then you make the decision, say, hey, I think I'm worth 50 bucks right now because I'm at the beginning of my recording career. Or someone might like me might be like, well, let's go up a little bit, you know? I'm just kidding. That sounds conceited or something, but you know what I mean? It's like, I know your worth yeah. um, and know you're worth something. Don't do it for free, but do it for food or do it for gear trade or, um, or do it for your portfolio. It's you're either going to, you're either going to get it for, I'd say if we can sum this down a little bit, you're either going to do it for the awesome connection or you're going to do it for the money um, or you're going to do it for the fun probably. And usually if you can get two of those three things, it's probably, probably going to be a good time. That's awesome. I love it. Or, or good for your, things. good for your career. Good for your uh, well being. I guess if you're, if you're a hobbyist, right. Or something like that. Yeah, no, that's great advice. Especially that I love that last part where it's like, you can get two of these three, either connection and fun or fun and money or something. Yeah. I love and that. I most of the time I try and go for all three now, but <laughs> yeah. 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 That's, that's awesome. That's great. Well, thanks, thanks so much for talking with me today. I appreciate you giving me your time and, uh, I think a lot of people are going to love what you had to say. So I appreciate Yeah, it. yeah. Can I, can I plug a couple of my current projects at all? Go for it. Yeah, let's hear about it. What are you excited for? What's coming up? For, um, I'm, I'm, so I'm, my band that I'm, I'm in is called The Boys Ranch, and we do like 60s rock, um, like kind of like surf rock and garage rock kind of thing. Sound like Dick Dale and the Beach Boys and whatnot, and the kinks a little bit. We're working on a new uh, LP that we'll be coming out with later this summer. Um, and I'm producing... Um, several al albums for other artists as well. Um, one's called Fontaine and she's a singer songwriter. So she plays music that kind of sounds like the early seventies, Carol, um, Carol King and Karen Carpenter and Todd Rundgren. Um, working on a, a record for a group called Lasso Spells. They're also kind of garage rock sixties influenced, just moved here from Nashville. Um, and then producing another record for a local artist named Patrick Bowie. And that record's going to be really cool. It sounds kind of like Wilco and Pavement nice. um, and 90s alternative rock as well. 
Um, and he, he's a professional trombone, jazz trombonist. So it's, it's totally a 180 for him to kind of go into this indie rock realm. Um, and we've, uh, the boys ranch coming back to the boys ranch. We have a show next month, um, at urban lounge doing a velvet underground tribute night. So everyone knows velvet underground legendary, you know, um, rock artists, uh, we're going to be covering the whole album loaded front to back. That's so awesome. I'm really excited about that. So I don't want to talk too much. Um, last record I'm working on is for the Brimstones, um, and we did we got to record that down in LA at a all analog studio. So we were, we were recording straight to tape and doing live takes, and we only were able to, able to do a few overdubs because there's only 16 tracks on that tape machine. Yeah. So it's pretty rad. So that's I think so that's cool. most of the stuff I'm working on. Um, we used to do uh, weekly nights at Bar X, um, DJing on Monday nights with uh, the International Society of Rock and Roll. Um, a little local kind of collective and label and whatnot as well. But yeah, sorry, I don't want to talk too much, but it's no, always fun to like tell people what, what I'm up to so they can kind of check into that kind of stuff. Um, produce some tracks for Say Hey last year and the year before as well. And those guys are really rad and doing cool stuff. Um, but yeah, just keep working. I mean, work begets work. So um, work is maybe a weird word because I think it's like, it's more having fun with deadlines yeah. kind of thing. You That's know? the way to put it. I like that. Um, Cause we always spin work is seems negative kind of thing when you yeah, say that. Exactly. So, but work begets work. So do more work and more work's going to come stay in touch with people. Don't burn bridges. Um, say sorry when you're wrong, you know what I mean? And, and whatnot. And, and if, if people say no, it doesn't mean no forever. It just means no right now. 